ibu. Folks, and welcome to the very last everything we always want to know about board gaming, but we're afraid to ask. Thank you, Dan, my illustrious co host, Dan <laughs> Fellow Traveler, for that amazing uh... video. So, uh, so this is the last everything you always wanted to know about board gaming. And don't worry, we're not going away. We're just ah, look at that. It takes a Canadian, we're... William Ahrens, by the way, happy belated birthday to ask we... why the asterisk. Huh? We, we are, uh, we are moving to Thursdays. So that is, that is the news. So as of next week, we will be on, on Thursday night, same time, same bat channels. And with a little bit of a reformat too, a little bit of a, a, a refreshing up as it were. And I think we got some, some pretty cool guests lined up as well. So no promises though, because we are not the kind of those kind of people who keep promises. That would be crazy. So I would <laughs> like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. We're going to do like a retrospective, I suppose, uh, because this is something I haven't been counting them. Um, or I have been, but I think I lost track of a couple here and then uh, we've got about 110 of these, by the way. Did you know uh, that? Really? Yeah. Something like that. Holy shit! Yeah, where's my check? Pretty much what I said. Yeah, the uh, the big big check for forty seven cents uh, from YouTube will be arriving <laughs> forthwith. So, so it will it, we, we will be up against the Compass Town Hall, but that's uh that's only monthly. Uh, so who cares? That's fine. We can watch both, and we're on a little earlier. So if they start at eight or nine or whatever it is, then they start at. They start thought, at nine. I, think. I thought they if they start at nine, then we're not going head to head against them. In this case, it's going to be a perfect segue into the Compass Games monthly show when, when that. Yeah, happens. yeah. Wow. So, and if you you like Compass Games or interested in the products, you you, should, you ought to be watching their live stream because there's always a gold mine of information in there. So, isn't that the, the uh, town hall, the live stream? Yeah, that's what I'm, ta yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, this one, uh, I think it's this Thursday. They're going to have Brittany on. So. Uh, I'm just glad we don't. Uh, our ugly mugs don't have to compete with her. That would Brittany be who? embarrassing. Brittany, uh, that's running marketing over at Compass. Oh, so we're not. We can't compete with that. So, oh, Jeff uh, Beeler says it's bi-monthly now. So you mean bi-monthly, as in every two months? Because I, I, I felt like it was becoming a little more intermittent. I don't know if that's. Uh, uh, they do usually give a game or two away. Actually, maybe sometimes three or four. Actually, it's a pet. It depends how Bill feels. He's he's mercurial, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to find a, a coupon with which we can buy a McDonald's hamburger with the with the royalty. And by the way, that that's split so, in half. That forty nine cents. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Bi weekly. Well, there you go. Uh, so, okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Brittany's got pretty good taste in war games too. By the way, I'm just saying she wants to play world. Wanted to play World and Flames at the. Compass Spring Expo that was like maybe we should ago. have her on, man. Uh, we could, we could. I could ask her. So, she'll, I think she'll talk to me. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, we, she was one of the people playing in the war when we played at Compass Expo last uh, November. Uh, she was on the other map though, so we didn't have a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, interaction with her. So, um. So anyway, but yeah, we've been doing this a long time now. And this was, I, I want to say this was Dan's idea after all. And, you know, I, so it was my copious free time and all. Right? I don't remember. Yeah, that's because it was like 110 episodes ago. That's like, yeah, that's like, I, I that's what. like 26 months ago. And the thing so, is, is that we're so, we're so. Uh, organized is the word uh, you're looking no, for. Op opposites in terms of, of fucking war game knowledge oh, that's shit. I'm, I'm just i'm just a groupie well that's true you know maybe we should have like uh um trying to think of somebody who would be good as a, as a regular guest you know we're we're i don't know that we're the tonight show of of gaming because we're i think we're more like the smothers brothers of war gaming to be honest about it <laughs> hey yeah, they, they were on for a long time man they were on for a long time yeah, um, and they were generally funny, unlike say laugh in, which I didn't ever laugh in. Laugh in, 
I thought it was ter- ter- terrifically unfunny. Um, but uh, the Smothers Brothers were at least funny some of the time. Yeah, you heard that story so, about uh, John Lennon and uh, uh, God, who's the other guy? The guy who wrote uh, Coconut. Uh, um, you mean Buffett? No, no, uh, son of Schmilson. What's his name? Harry Nielsen. Harry Niel- Harry. Yeah, okay. And uh, they were at the Smothers Brothers show. And they were drunk and all stoned out, and they were heckling them. <laughs> but they were doing it on purpose, you know? But still, they were being obnoxious. But anyways. Well, not that we're ever obnoxious. Yeah. I'm just saying. So, yeah, we're just uh, we're just doing, you know, a bit, of, a bit of a spring cleaning after a couple of years and moving to a different night so that I don't have to always stream two nights in a row at the beginning of the week. So that was my motivation. And then so Wednesday, like which we, what? we're going to be on Mondays. I'll be on on Monday on my show. And then yeah. we'll be doing this on Thursday. And then every once in a while, I'll do something on Tuesday. And then on so Wednesday, that's my actual game night. How many shows do you do a week, man? I've been doing two live shows a week for the last two years, pretty and much. Don't you have a and, life? A life. And usually, apparently not. Uh, usually there's two canned videos a week too, sometimes more, but usually it's two. Uh, but I, I'm going to do less unboxing videos, I think. Um, one of the reasons why I was doing it uh, is, A, it's relatively easy content, but then, of course, I can't live with that, so I'm overcomplicating it and doing editing and all this other shit. So, it's you know, it might take me an hour to... might take me 15 minutes to film the video. It depends on the, vi- on the game. Uh, but then I, it might take me you know, an hour to edit the video sometimes. Usually not, but still, but I'm you looking, your... you're looking at an hour, hour and a half, two hours of total time investment, so it ain't nothing anymore. And how um, long do you do your counter-clipping? How long is the counter-clipping show? That's the varies, right? Pretty much two, no, it's pretty much two hours. I, I have two taken hours? once or twice I have bailed on it early for either because I felt like shit or, um, or for whatever logistical reason. Uh, but... Because like last year at Winterfest, this year went fine. Last year at Winterfest, the sh- fucking quality was garbage. So we, I think we can literally. Mo from Mo's Game Table is here. Thanks for coming by. So, uh, and we're not going to be up against Mo's show, which is usually monthly anyway on, on Tuesdays anymore. So there's that. Um, <clears throat> but no, it's reliably, it's two hours. There's less oh, than Jesus. half a dozen episodes. Uh, if I've done well, less than that. It's I usually mean, about two some... hours and five minutes. You're at what, 180 a counter clipping, a number episode 180 or something? 126 or? was yesterday. Okay. So for two hours, how much more you got to say? That's a great question. I mean, that's a concern. But to be honest about it, that that's that's a little bit of a concern. Am I am I am I strip mining the same topics over and over again? Um, I started doing kind of like the best of shows and the you know the the overview shows to kind of illustrate the the hobby history and a little bit of the actual military history. Um, and that's gone really well. Feedback appreciated. Um, but, you know, some topics you can't touch because there's not enough games on them. I mean, I can't I can't talk about the Air really War because hey, I don't know shit about it. There's probably enough games to support that as a topic. But I've, like, never seriously looked at it as a, as a, like, a thing to buy games on. So I could spend but- the whole time talking about how I don't know anything about Barlev except the counters are pretty. That's all I know. So... <laughs> <clears throat> but you know how many people you get for the counter clipping? Uh, last night, I believe it was one seventy nine. Okay, so nothing's wrong. It, it's well, it's yeah. Basically... I, I mean, I, I'm not complaining about that. People want to no. see it, so I'll keep doing it. And if that means I have to have another, you know, little tweak to the types of formats that we do, then that's fine, right? I've generally tried to keep guests off of it. We've done that a couple of times, and it's kind of it kind of hasn't gone well. So, Dan doesn't have time to watch anybody. I watched a few of Artie's shows. Other than that, I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. You should watch him because I nonstop bad mouthing of Dan. Dan, that fucking guy. You know, I can't. I don't know how anybody works with this guy for two hours every week. So you should (laughs) definitely watch him. So you could. Jesus Christ! You know what I mean? There's there's other things than war games in life, for God's sake. So I disagree. So yes, we'll do a show about the Habsburg jaw. Which would be fascinating, actually. You know, talking about the Habsburg and the, jaw. The I still bomba have, haircut. I still have sinuses problems there, and my jaw, it's affecting my jaw. I'm surprised. Are you I grinding your teeth at night? That's my guess. I, so I use this Flonase stuff, 
Uh, and it does seem to help that a little bit. Did you call it blownaise? Flownaise. Oh, I thought it was blownaise. Uh, the best of FGA would be an, an hour of you guys staring at t uh, TV static. So I, I might do that <laughs> as, as a gag. But uh, there is there is no best of FGA. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I, I was looking at this. because some, Somebody asked me my opinion about uh, Avalanche Press a couple days ago. And I'm like, you know, I, I really haven't looked at their stuff in quite a long time. And um, I'm not really sure they got that much going on because it's pretty much uh, Mike... Uh, Mike uh, Benning, Benninghoff. Mike Benninghoff, yeah. I, I want to say Mike Berticelli and that, that ain't it. Um, but uh, I, I looked at their website and they got a fair amount of stuff in print now. And I, I don't have a particularly high opinion of Panzer Grenadier, to be completely honest, but um, there are people that like it. And that Second World War at Sea, to me, actually looks decent. So, and they got a couple other things that look reasonably decent too. So maybe I ought to give them another look. Their, their Operation Husky game, which I'm not sure exactly what it's called because they've done like a couple versions of it with different covers and they may or may not be the same game. Um, it's actually supposed to be pretty good too. I mean, you'd think that a, a company could called Avalanche Press could pull off a game about Operation Avalanche, but that that's that. You know, uh, Artie, not uh, not uh, and 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 not because you or I don't like Avalanche Press or Decision. It must seem to them like we're dissing them or something, man. I I to be frank, I doubt. Anybody at Avalanche Press or Decision, or Decision Games, Games is, watching even this is aware that there is a thing called YouTube. So <laughs> uh, we're, we're talking about a couple of the, oh, the, the less, Christ. let's say, let's say me, new media savvy companies out there, uh, to be honest. So uh, and, and not just them. They, they're not alone in that in that rarefied company either. But um, there's there's plenty of publishers in a wargaming space that really don't understand what content creators are doing or how it's helping them out even though i i'm guessing here this is an off off the cuff guess but i personally have probably sold somewhere between 50 and 100 copies of the third winner for multi-man publishing i would i would bet money on that and you know i would what? bet a copy of the third winner that i've you know, personally I, I, sold at least 50 copies of that game as much as much as bill thomas he's known as a hard nose hard ass he was not a YouTube guy, and look at him, man. He he's not that he saw the light. He saw Bill, an opportunity. You know what Bill I mean? Bill is, is, is cool. like I said, Bill's in Mercurial, and he seems like a, a, absolute. If you just like encounter him on, like you watch one of their shows every once in a while, and and you come away with the impression that he is incredibly <laughs> stubborn and absolutely obtuse. Um, a lot of people will have that impression. <laughs> However, uh, Bill actually does listen to people. So well, well, Bill, it's it's not, Bill is not is is not just this is I this is how I'm what? doing it and that's it because that's the way I've always done it and that's I'm why I'm praising the guy. <laughs> that's so, why I'm praising the guy, and, and I don't think yeah. he likes me. But I don't know why. I don't think he likes me either. In fact, he told me, you know, I don't really like you. Um, do to my face. <laughs> you gotta like the guy just for that, man. Uh, you know, Bill gets. Po I get Bill a lot of points for me. He's rough around the edges, but he's he's <laughs> lovable. Yeah, you, you just want to give him a hug, and then then you say, "Nah, <laughs> I'm good. Uh, we'll we, we, we'll do without the it. hug." Hey, man, that's cool. So, uh, Bill Live is yeah. So that's the other thing about Bill Thomas is that you're not getting. Bill is not. There's stuff he won't say because it's like a business thing that he doesn't. He doesn't feel he can reveal. But you're not getting some fake lot bullshit Bill for the sake of, <laughs> of of publicity. You're getting the actual guy. Uh, Bill is a no bullshit guy. What you see is Perfect. what you get. That's him. And I'm not saying he ain't hard to deal with because boy, um, you just look at the 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 the, the thousand eyes stare on those Compass Games employees, man. It's like, Look, man, it's, so, it it's got to be rough you know working I mean? for that company, but uh, but you're not, you're not, he's not giving you some line of bullshit either. Hey, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather have some guy be truthful than uh, be hypocritical. 
Well, right. I mean, you know, there's there's value in in authenticity, yeah, and absolutely, and Bill is not lacking authenticity. So, well, good for him. You know, good, good for Bill. I, I think I, that's I I mean that in a in a complimentary way. Um, I mean, I'm not saying Bill makes every decision correctly either. Okay, at one point, USPS was the best option for a company operating at that kind of scale. I'm not sure it is now. But at one point, it probably was. So, you know, that that is a thing that is dynamic and changes over the course of time. So I, I imagine they'll eventually look, look at that and figure it out. So what do you think? Should we have Bill on? Is it too dangerous to have Bill on? <laughs> no, I'd, have, I'd, I'd be happy to have anybody from company. Let's do it, John man. Or whatever. Yeah, like, why not? Why not? I'm not sure he would say yes, but there's no harm in asking, right? Well, um, I got, uh, you know, I've had, you know, it's funny because you like, uh, you, you send an email to sales at compassgames.com, which is pretty much Bill. And, and, you know, sometimes you get like a one word answer, like that says something like fine. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes you don't get an answer and shit just shows up a couple, a week later. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so there's that. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, Jeff Feeler watched an interview of John Prados on Little Wars TV about three years ago. Yeah. I, I obviously I got to watch that. Um, I, I'm not sure I was aware that that was floating around. I don't really watch Little Wars TV because they do all miniature stuff or 98% miniature stuff, and I'm not into miniatures, so it's not the value. Cool, I think I've subscribed to them. I just don't watch their videos. They're, they're well organized. Uh, it, it's 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 a good channel, man. Oh, it's that's an excellent channel. If I was into historical miniatures, I'd be all I'd be all over Little Wars TV. I might literally be all over Little Wars TV. Um. Is there a reason that MMP seems to charge less for shipping than the other companies? I don't think that's actually true. Um, I think, uh, David, where do you live? Because MMP does charge you <laughs> pretty much the actual shipping cost. So if you live at, say, east of the Mississippi, your shipping cost is going to look pretty reasonable. If you live in Oregon, your shipping cost is going to seem insane. So, And they ship via uh, USPS, as far as I best of buy my collection. I should have something coming from them anytime, actually. They may start shipping. Today is the last call for Roads uh, on to Richmond 2. So if you haven't ordered that and you want to, do it today because they're going to start shipping it tomorrow. Man, the artist of that um, of that cover, whoever has the original, it's beautiful. I'm not sure what the provenance of the cover is. I can tell you Charlie Kibler did the map encounters. So. Uh, what am I thinking of? Am I th like a... Uh... What am I thinking of? The beautiful covers. There. You're thinking of the the painting that they used for the cover. Yeah, I believe it's a modern painting. I, I'm not sure that it's a it's a period painting. A lot of times yeah. they use period paintings because it's public domain. You don't have to That's pay right. anybody for it. So I completely sympathize with that. But um, so the mascot for co I I don't I, I man I'm at, you got to ask Brittany about that. She's in charge of marketing. So, a possum. I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything. So, about so Artie, this what are we going to call the show now on Thursday? All right. Well, let's let's put it to a vote. I don't have any poll mechanisms set up so far. So I like hookers and blow. Well, that was a suggestion that was in the list, more or less, as a joke, right? Uh, I, I don't actually want to call the show "Hookers and Blow" with Dan and Artie. Um, I think that might set the wrong tone. So. For our newcomers to the hobby. Well, I ain't watching these fucking guys. Uh, <laughs> so my idea is that let me know which of these you think is best. If you the and you by you I mean the chat, which of these you think is best? Are you coolest, kidding? Or... We're leaving it up to them. We're not leaving it up to them. We're requesting feedback. And we can always veto and we gotta we gotta live with this, right? <laughs> Show of fools ain't bad, actually. I like that. Ehaw, yeah. ehaw. That's that ain't bad. <laughs> Toilet Wars. That's a, that's the Dan Solitaire uh, oh, channel that he's going to be starting. Uh, how to flush your... He's going to have a how-to video on how to flush your $15,000 toilet and how to hook it up to the Bluetooth. I'm going to have to make a video and put that up, man. Uh, you really ought to at this point. We've gotten enough fucking traffic out of it. So everything you didn't want to know about Dan's <laughs> toilet. Anyway, that, that so the ideas here was, was wild, wild wargaming. <laughs> War Gamers Fun House, <laughs> wide, <laughs> wide world of by uh, bidet battle. No, that's uh, ridiculous. You know, 
it's funny you should mention that because when we bought the house, well, I didn't do this. Every toilet has, there's three bathrooms. Every toilet has a bidet. Every, You're damn the, right. Every toilet it's should a, have a bidet. attachment to the toilet. It's not like a freestanding thing. But, but you got to learn how to use a bidet. You got to learn how to clench. Because if you don't clench, the water, it's an enema. I, you know I, I like to, I, I actually call it the ball freshener. So it's, it's the cool and refreshing water. Well, maybe that's the, my problem. The okay. bowels of Ohio limestone. So uh, Laurel and Hardy and Hexes ain't bad either. Uh, line, LOS, line of sight, that's not, that's actually pretty good. We, that, that might be too good for us. They may need, a better show might need to do this. It's always Carl um, Kreider. Always Carl Wazoos Kreider. of Wargaming. <laughs> Wazoos of Wargaming was another good one. Oh, uh, shooting the Chit was another one. but And Chit Chat's already taken. <laughs> Somebody else was doing that. Although I did it first, but it was like a one-off thing I uh, held on Google Plus with like four people watching. <laughs> so, oh, Christ. No enemas here. <laughs> uh, Randos at War, which I thought was actually pretty good. Uh, Zones of Annoyance, which I also thought was pretty good. Hey, I like that. And now for something completely different. And now, <laughs> uh, I, I would like it to be not a, a, not a title that has 27 words. Oh, for God's great. sakes, man. Chit Disturbers. Chit or Chit Stirrers. That's not bad. Um... <laughs> Please demonetize this show. That's every week. We don't need to call the show that. Oh, Jesus. This Christ. is actually really good, uh, but I wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to take it because it's too, for one That's thing, it's, too long. It's, it's stolen. It's stolen. It's already been done. Yeah, and these are all stolen. I had wild, <laughs> a wide world of wargaming at one point, which is not a bad thematically, is not a terrible title because um, it's. Uh, you know, we cover a lot of different stuff from a lot of different angles. I talk about a lot of random non war game <laughs> shit, but there's there's that. So, ah, kidding. Jesus Christ! I'm not sure we're getting Hilarious. a lot of super valuable feedback from the chat on this, but it's but it's uh, you know at least it's funny. <coughs> so <laughs> zones out of I'm control. Dying that's here. that's I'm actually dying. pretty good too. Cross that. This is not bad. Uh, we got the beef. <laughs> We got the beef. There was a Twitter channel at one point called <laughs> Miles Arby's. Oh, Jesus. Um, it, that, it would put out tweets every day to the, something to the effect of, God, you know, man. we're all going to die. Enjoy Arby's. <laughs> so. Uh, how about drafted? Drafted. Uh, that's a little. That, that, that doesn't tell anybody anything. That's the problem with that. Zock Bros. I don't want to have a title with bros in it. I gotta, I gotta tell you. Yeah, it sounds like a it sounds like a Seinfeld episode. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I am generally pleased at the at the at the <laughs> noticeable lack of bros in wargaming. Let's put it that way. That's true. Um, yeah, not that there's no knuckleheads. There's always knuckleheads, <laughs> but they're 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 a tiny minority. So. As the as the knuckleheads always oh, are. Oh Christ! Like this is ridiculous. No topic covered. This ah, is good this too. is the ac accuracy in journalism right here. <laughs> We've never claimed to be journalists here. Uh, we should or, all go to a bar. We should all go to a bar. Talk Thursday. <laughs> so you got to come down to uh, Origins. Uh, that that's when we'll we'll go to a bar. I'll take uh, yeah, you to a bar and when, buy when, you a hundred thousand people. I'll find it's about thirty thousand. I'll yeah, uh, I got sinuses problems, man. That's a month for well, it's about three weeks from now. Actually, actually, it's it's uh, it's two weeks. No, from meaning today. that I'm gonna get a disease there somehow. Oh, that's probable. Yeah, I I walked out of Compass Expo with fucking COVID, so it's it's yeah, it's well, plausible Jesus, that that you know happen. what I'm saying. So that's a lot smaller than uh, that's a lot smaller than um, Origins. So. Dear uh, God, but, man. but anyway, that's hilarious. The turd winter. <laughs> Abandon all hope, ye, all ye who enter here. <sighs> so this ain't bad. Uh, I'm not using it though. <sighs> so, so I'd like to thank the chat for their participation in this exercise. <laughs> no, these guys so, are amazing. I I didn't think it was the, this this level of intelligence. <laughs> oh, there's some good. There's some good ones. I just, I'm not sure. There's something actionable in there. Wargaming Thursday edition. That ain't. That, that's not too bad. 
Italian without words. It's just an hour of damn farting and blowing his nose every week. So, the offside guys, that sounds like a football podcast to me. Yeah, come on, Tony. So, it's all good. Main line of resistance. The chit heads, that's pretty good. Um, I think that's something I want to put on a t-shirt. I like random on. shit. Random shit. <laughs> Sometimes even war games. Ah, Christ. Uh, we've been better lately, I think. I think everyone will have to agree. Not tonight so much, but uh, we've been generally trying to stay a little bit more focused than usual, other than our weekly digression about Dan, the current status of Dan's toilet, um, which has been become an ongoing weekly feature. In fact, I think, Dan, I've got to insist that since we're moving, I think you need to do like a 30-second update uh, at each week, and then I, we can show that during the show. Uh, so prepare the 30-second uh, toilet update in advance. <laughs> we lost a few viewers because of that, man. I wouldn't be terribly shocked, <laughs> to say the least. Counterintelligence is pretty attractive. attractive. Uh, play counterpoint's been beat. taken, obviously. Well, war game love. Uh, we have already done this, this, this important work, actually. If you recall the show where we asked what is a war game, we completely settled the question at that time. So thank you for playing. Um, that's what's done. Uh, yeah, we, yeah we, we've covered that. We've settled that. We definitively settled that after 65 years of arguing. What's so, the, I'm talking about the title. Oh, no, I don't think we're done. I think no. I think the suggestions are still coming in. <laughs> Noble Knight Squires is a great idea, but I'll demand an actual sponsorship from Noble Knight, not the, not just a bullshit discount code. Drum Maybe we can work on it. Yeah, I mean they they're 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 passing wheelbarrows full of cash to those guys at the players aid. Why not us? Damn it. So damn it. So I'm I'm sure they make at least they, they send them a check for at least like two or three dollars. But it is American money, to be fair. So that, <laughs> you know that'll what? buy you that'll buy it. you a whole toilet Canadian money. Let me work on it. So <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, one of the ideas that we talked about was uh, decision games and why they're awesome, starring Stigler. Um, so, ah, the dirty duo. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the ah, uh, oh, um, Christ. The uh, I gotta find that graphic that got Stigler with the counter clippers. And the, <laughs> God, man. The decision games and a frame portrait of Doc Cummins on as well. So Stigler. I gotta. I gotta find that. Stigler, when's your game coming out? What the hell's going on? Uh, well, please feel free to put that in the chat, but I think it's getting pretty close. The um, uh, I was about to up this. So there was a, that GMT. A good job on the GMT update video, by the way. Um, you should do that every oh, time there's a GMT Jesus update. Christ. It's a big deal, right? They, GMT puts a ton of effort into that. The least you could do is read it off verbatim for them. <laughs> so. Uh, Jesus Christ. And you know, Robert Carroll Kilroy was here. This, 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 is, this is a well-respected man. Blow. I know. He's a well-respected man in his community. Oh, yeah. Family man. What the oh, hell is yeah. the matter with Pil this Pillar of the, of the local community. I bet he's like a volunteer firefighter and all that stuff. So. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, okay. And Ray Russellman says that Andre Richard 2 covers a Keith Rocco painting of Sailor's Creek. So I assume that's a relatively recent painting and not like a painting that was painted in the 1800s. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It, it is really nice. Don't, don't get me Gorgeous. wrong. Ah, very good. Hoping to be totally in the art department end of summer. Past that, not a clue. So, a uh, little bit of, of miscellaneous news on some of this stuff. Uh, word is that the uh, info for Army Barbarossa Army Group North is supposed to be in the hands of GMT by the end of the year. And last time they said something like that, the, they being the people actually working on it, um, they made that date. So, Isn't it a straight reprint? No. Nope, it's a moderate redesign, actually. Okay. Uh, there's a, a couple reasons for that. One, they, they've changed some pretty basic stuff about the way the game works. They changed the way steps work is the most obvious thing. Uh, supplies a little bit different. There's a couple other differences. There's no like seismic. It's not like a totally different game or anything. 
Uh, but they did fine tune a number of things. And one of the goals for that was so that you could combine the, the individual games more easily. There were some friction problems when you tried to do it using the old editions. Um, now, my feeling is that they're all big enough that they're totally playable by themselves. So, Sun Mu on War. Um, we could just like read, you know, read Clausewitz or something like that yeah, for 20 minutes. Every yeah, that, that, would, that, might would be, that would be great. Oh, that would be dull, dull. But um, somebody would probably watch it. Uh, Jeff Beeler asks, is there. Who's running the third world war game at Origins? Me and Lee Hanna are running the third world war game at Origins. So that's the answer to that. Uh, there will not be a variable setup. We're just going to play the straight, everything but Persian Gulf scenario. Uh, look, uh, and I, 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 we'll I, actually be be starting the dry, or continuing the dry run of that uh, tomorrow night, actually. What's my power day? might go off. So, uh, well, we'll we'll know when your screen goes black. Yeah. So, hey, look, six actual, no rules. I like that. Uh, that's not bad, actually. So you must be Canadian. Uh, uh possibly, possibly. Uh, no, this is true, actually. Dan, we're wearing a ridiculous hat uh, while reading Clausewitz. Would probably be fine in German and mispronouncing the German. Dan tries really hard at his Canadian and French and and Italian pronunciation, and much, much less hard at his German pronunciation. So I, I try. So, I'm just saying. <laughs> Who is this guy, Sing. Tony Mamo? Who is he? Uh, Tony. Tony comes and watches us every week. Or yeah. just about. Yeah. He's making fun of me, huh? Eh? Does he know yeah. what his last name means? I'm, I, I, does, yes, I assume that he does. I assume that he was probably has probably heard the jokes already, would be my guess. So Tony, I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, ooh, so that's is actually good, a good a good, a good idea here. I don't know. I, I like this specifically, but I, I do kind of like the idea of errata because we all How love just errata, errata as you errata. know, and there should never be errata. The tiniest piece of errata should result in the death penalty for everyone involved. Um, hey, as errata, you know. errata sounds good, man. So I rate errata <laughs> or I rate over errata. And yes, William Bird. Yes, we're having smoke. We actually have smoke uh, in our area. Okay, I assume wildfire, that was the legalized wildfire. marijuana. No, no wildfires. Ah, okay. Well, we, it hasn't rained down here in like a month, man. No, it's or just raining good, right now. Good two or three weeks. So we ha we haven't getting shit down here. So, uh, and it was like 55 degrees when I left the, you know, when I went outside to walk the dog at seven in the morning and, uh, it's pretty chilly now. Actually, when I, I go outside it. after the show, I'll put a coat on. I so, love chilly. So, well, you're Canadian. You better. Oh, yeah. If you want, weren't, didn't like it cold, you presumably would move to Florida to live with the alligators and the mosquitoes. Yeah. Alexandre. Uh, yeah. My, um. Um, my wife is in uh, Pierrefonds, so closer to Montreal, and she says it was pretty bad, man. <laughs> I can I can understand French, except when Dan is saying it, of course. So, the last voyage of the SS Pen called me. <laughs> no, it's not my show, man. Canadian pyromaniacs. So um, let's hope that uh, we might have a show. We, there might be a show on my channel on next Tuesday. We'll see. I got to iron out exactly who's who we're trying to get, but uh, we'll see if that actually works out. I hope that wasn't supposed to have been tonight. Because I don't want to disappoint those people. Okay, outstanding. That's next Tuesday. Yeah, that's you're lucky. Day. That's all you're getting in New Jersey from us Canadians, uh, David. Defa, Defa Cheech. Uh, apparently, yeah, I, I have actually heard that, although I have not smelled it. I assume it smells like poutine. So, uh, yeah. no, that's too bad because I love poutine. Poutine is yeah, awesome. but poutine, you don't want to smell burnt poutine. Well, it's like I don't know about that actually. Uh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. No, there's not that much cheese in it. It uh, sounds like it sounds like burnt poutine. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> 
So Aaron Dennis is going to Canada. So presumably not for war games, unless you're going to Calgary, in which case it's like the friggin' Valhalla. Hey, but, uh, 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 Heilman, Ryan Heilman's coming out in my area, man. Uh, uh, July. Oh, I think 16th I heard about that. I yeah. think I heard about that. Presumably he's being, uh, he's being detained there for some reason. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. What is this Montreal smoke meat? What it, what's that all about? It's like a it's sort of like pastrami or something like that, isn't it? No, no. Uh, Montreal smoke meat is a thing on its own, <clears throat> and it is sincerely fantastic. I've tried it in New York. They had Montreal style smoke meat, and it was pastrami. It's not pastrami. That might it's, be why it, I think it's pastrami. Yeah, it ain't pastrami. I'm telling you, if you ever, I'm, I'm gonna take Ryan for sure. I'm gonna take Ryan to to uh, what the hell is it called? Uh, why am I thinking Mo? <laughs> oh, Christ, I forget the. the anyways, I'm gonna take him to uh, the finest in Montreal smoked meat establishments. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, I forget I forget the name, but anyways, you want when you and you ask for the smoke the cut the, the cut of smoked meat Schwartz's. Merci Alexandre. You want the type? You want full fat smoked meat, full fat, and a pickle. So is it like, is it like a brisket? Is it like what cut is it? It's a brisket. It's a brisket. Some kind of force meat product where it's It's like a a brisket. Okay, so it's like it's like pastrami is what you're saying. No, man. (laughs) I only know what I've seen on YouTube. It's not. It's 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 not brined. I did. uh, Okay, fair enough. The pastrami usually is, and then it's smoked, but. so the the uh, it depends on the fat, Carl. If it depends on the fat, some you fat. You got is a delicious. problem, Carl? Eh? You I'm, got a problem? I'm not with a fat, huge Carl? fan of beef fat, like on the cut, oh, right? If God, you got you that sort of flabby fat. fat, but pork it, it, fat, particularly pork belly fat or duck fat. Oh, yeah, that's, that's amazing! That's amazing. Duck fat's good. But I'm telling you, the the smoked meat fat, it, you gotta let it drip down your your your, your chin, and you gotta be disgusting when you eat it. Because the place where you're going to eat is disgusting. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. And yeah. You, I, I got to, I got, obviously, I got to come up there at some point just to bully you into taking me to all these smoked meat places and these oh, Montreal geez. style bagels that I keep hearing about. Montreal I, style. No, no. I'm, Montreal bagels. Everything I'm else sure, is some Montreal style. I'm sure they're at least as good as Lenders bagels that I get out of the freezer case at Kroger. You're crazy. So. <laughs> You don't even joke. The thing is, when you go to Schwartz's, you walk in and you're sitting next to, you don't know who the hell you're sitting next to because it's, it's just like picnic tables, right? Okay. And then the the, the, the the greasy Greek uh waiter comes up to you and says, <gasps> right? And so you why say, is it, Can why I is the, the waiter Greek when the place is called Schwartz's? Come on, come on, come on. You don't know about the mob in Montreal, but anyways. No, that's true. I don't know anything about the mob yeah, no, in I'll Montreal. I'll show you around. I'll but I do know that apparently every deli and, and <coughs> diner in Ohio is owned by Greek immigrants, so there's that. Anyway, <coughs> let's not talk about that. Anyway, so you walk in, you walk in, and the guy grunts at you, right? And so you say, can I have the menu? And he looks at you like you're a moron. He goes, it's up on the fucking wall. And he leaves. <laughs> and he leaves. Because he's got no time for you, man. In and out, if, in and if it's out. The kind of place where they don't have a paper menu, then you know they don't have. They a don't paper have a menu. paper it's menu. It's on the wall. You expect so... if if you jerk them around at Katz's Deli in New York City, they'll walk. They'll they'll throw you out. They'll like I, they'll I, like I, have, I'm... you know, Giovanni the leg breaker from the back come out and haul your ass Look, out to the I'm street. I'm telling you, crunch telling you into you, a fire hydrant. A you're not gonna want to eat there because the meat's just stacked in front of the window, and it's like what. The hell me eat there and you sit down and it's rude and the, everything is greasy but as soon as you shove that smoked meat in your mouth you're like holy jesus <laughs> holy jesus i will investigate the montreal smoked meat on youtube youtube will tell me whether it's good or not yeah 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 you let them tell you i mean i admittedly does schwartz's have bagels too no man you get your bagels from from uh oh my god I keep forgetting. I haven't been downtown in so long. I like my bagels from St. Bernard Street. What the fuck is it called? Alexandre, help me here. St. Bernard and St. Lawrence, the bagel place that's there. 
Fuck. They, uh, I got to tell you, uh, if if I go to a place Save called, car. called Save Schwartz's, car. Uh, I, and there's no bagels, I'm, I'm going to be disappointed. Oh, Jesus Christ, you won't believe the bagels there. At Schwartz's? I thought we, we just no, covered this. St. Theater. Okay. Those sound like French bagels to me. Do the French make good bagels? Is there like a secret French bagel making tradition to compare no. with the croissant? No. For example? That, that's the Hebrew district, and it's coveted. It's wicked in what they do, man. The, the bagels, the smoked meat. Uh, uh, Christ, they're, they're, uh, there used to be Moisha's Steak Bar. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. What an incredible. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. I've heard this, too, actually. Uh, believe it or not, you can get it excellent bagel in columbus ohio but no you, you can't have, yeah you can but you have to know exactly where to go and it's not a place you can go they don't have a storefront they will deliver to your house <laughs> oh, um, that's shifty, man. but and they're the best bagels in town they're they are a respectable new york style bagel um but you see, most Arnie? bagels are like the chain bagels are not you bagels. see arting your 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 peewee uh, statement there, the best bagels in town. That's a peewee statement. In Montreal... Well, I mean, we're talking about Columbus, Ohio here. Spectrum. So, I mean, we're grading on a curve, okay? So... And look, in Montreal, it's the best bagels in the world. Okay. But it just shut we're, down. Obviously, I'm going to have to go and find out. And I'm, I'm going to... If if I go and these Montreal bagels are the slightest bit disappointing, you are. We're going to talk about this more than your fucking toilet. I will uh, pay your every, trip. I'm going to make little clips to open a show up with about how I will the, pay the your sad, trip, your depressing hotel, Montreal your bagels. Your and your blow. With me looking like this, <laughs> because the bagels suck so bad. So you yeah. better hope that they're that good. Yeah, they they are that good. Yeah, Southern Cal. It's generally really hard to find good bagels in Ohio. Generally speaking. I just happened to find the, the mail order place that has good. It's not mail order. They, they make them that morning and deliver them to you. But uh, it's oh, it's weird. Right. And you got to order like tw at least like $30 worth of stuff. So you're buying like three weeks worth of bagels. So uh, there's at hey, least Will there's at least a couple William. of really good Leonard Cohen. William, pieces. William, don't come to Montreal. They, uh, they, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've had bagels in New York city, so no, they're, they're going to, they're going to disagree with the, with the, with the nice folks in Montreal. You don't understand. You don't mm. understand. We used to go out clubbing and all that. And at three o'clock in the morning, when we're all freaked out and whatever, we're heading up to St. Lawrence street and we're getting bagels and everybody just like, holy moly. So, um, that's not the drunk food we have here in Ohio. Um, so there's a chain out of Pittsburgh called Tremonti Brothers. And what it is, is it's food that's amazing at one in the morning when you are drunk and starving. Um, and if you go there at two in the afternoon sober, it's like, eh, this is all right. Um, <laughs> so there there used to be a, I'm, this might still exist for a line. There used to be a <laughs> knockoff of this in Cleveland called Panini's. And we went there many times after becoming stupid um and could have sworn that it was the greatest food in the history of food uh but then like you go there for lunch one day and it's like uh this is okay i guess and the place is disgusting so uh patty uh patty Rafeski, big thanks for talking earlier posting of the uh, d-day link listen quite a bit oh very good uh yeah was that the um the radio broadcast the original radio broadcast of d-day which is on youtube because that's actually pretty awesome to listen to where it's like the actual live with commercials wow. and everything uh radio news broadcast of d-day cool. of, of the normandy invasion as it was happening and of course they didn't know shit but uh, they, they had confirmation that the invasion was happening but other than that they didn't know shit uh but it's it's fascinating to listen to for that reason I'm watching a, a private Ryan, Saving Private Ryan tonight. There you go. There you go. I did do the D Day show last night. So if anybody wants, and remember that actual Allied troops started landing on the fifth. So uh, from airplanes. You're right. But, they were air. Uh, yeah, yeah, paratroopers. The, the Pathfinders landed before midnight. 
the actual paratroopers landed shortly after midnight. I don't want to say actual paratroopers because that implies that the, the hard, the stone cold badasses that the pathfinders were, were not real paratroopers. The regular paratroopers came in after midnight. Promonti. Yeah. Well, I do you mean don't wanna, Promontis. You don't want to. It used to be Promonti brothers, didn't it? Or maybe I'm thinking of something else, but that's you don't the right want to the Jaegers. Uh, that's, uh, oh, Ohio still has Mr. Hero. There's two of them in Columbus. Uh, they're not easy to get to, but I was actually close to one of them when I was down there. Um, and there is one down the street. It's quite a way. It's about 15, 20 minutes <laughs> away here. They're, they're not that common anymore, uh, but they are still around and they're still in a, in a, I need to clog my arteries as quickly as possible type of way. It's still pretty good. So So, oh, that's very good. This is great watching. Great watching. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I think the, but what's your favorite, like, part of the, of Band of Brothers? Well, the, the Carantin is pretty wicked, man. And also. Yeah, also, I'll agree with that. Yeah. And, and also, um, further on in the episodes, when they, uh, it starts getting a bit mushy when the Italian guy meets the, uh, the, I don't know if it's the Italian guy, but they meet the nurse and the nurse gets blown up. Um, they're they're in a town. They're getting sniped. Mm -hmm. um, I forget. I, I, it's not Saint Mary Glees. It's too cool. It's it's past. No, that. that's later. That's later. Saint Mary Glees is done day, day one, pretty much. Right. It's exactly. not the first so, episode. The first episode's the training episode, the Kirby yeah. episode. But um, I really like Foy actually, and I, I'm not. I have not read independently about the battle at Foy, it's so I don't know Foy. how. It's not that? called Foy. It's called. Is it called foie? Yeah, of course, because it's. Foie. <laughs> so anyway, um, is it even in France? I thought it was in Belgium or something. Oh, no, it's, it's. We have. We have. I speak French for God's sakes. Right, but is it in the French part of Belgium or the Dutch we part have, of Belgium? We have a Saint Foie in Quebec. Okay. Well, in any case, foie is that's that's a really good part. Uh, the the. The training, uh, the Curry is a great part too. Actually. I mean, Schwimmer so. is unbelievable. Oh, he's very good as as oh. what's his name, yeah. But yes, it, the Bastogne one, the Bastogne one is pretty good too, man. Yeah, I mean, that's good. Too. That's good too. That's good too. The whole thing's really good. The awesome. I, I think it benefited from a dramatic standpoint from being based on a single piece of work that they then kind of added on to with their own historical research. Um, the Pacific is based on three different books, I've, which of which I've read all of them. Um, and I think it's like, it's not as narratively cohesive um, for that reason, because you're kind of splitting your attention between multiple main characters. As I was going to say, isn't it that one, the protagonist, that one guy with the, with the, with the, his wife or his wife to be there? You're talking about Barcelona? The, the, uh, they meet an Italian wife or something. I don't know. I don't, uh, in Band of Brothers or the Pacific? The Pacific. Uh, that main character. There's one main character. There's so Eugene Sledge is probably the main character that you're thinking of. So yeah, and then uh, what's his name? Uh, Lecky. Uh, Lecky's the other one. And really, Barcelona is the third one. Really, I gotta watch that again, man. It's worth watching. It's very good. Uh, so there's the uh, there's that thing about the Masters of the Air about the Eighth Air Force uh, about the B seventeen uh, yeah something like that I I think that the the scope of this thing has changed over the twenty years they've been making it so um but the, so if if you're like talking about like the battle scenes the battle scenes in the Pacific are just as good as the ones at Vanderbilt. Uh, um, brutal in, in Pacific brutal well, it, the, the the battles were brutal I mean the battles in Europe were brutal too but the battles in the pacific were differently brutal and everybody had to i mean if i had a so, choice i'd rather be in a western theater not in a not in a pacific theater no way uh, we will send you to the russian front i bet you yeah, would no. like to go to the russian front eh, Clink? <laughs> so when i think of a movie called fortress i think of a really awful sci-fi movie with christophe lambert uh, which is not a good movie so um yeah there uh, but, but that uh masters of the air is supposed to be on in like spring 2023 and nobody knows anything about it 
there's like no trailer I, that I've seen anyway. There's no date, and it's June, man. The, the, the month, the, the spring's almost over. So now they are working. Uh, there's the Apple TV Plus Napoleon Ridley Scott thing with Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon, and I'm interested in seeing that. I'm a little confused about some of the stuff I've seen, but I. I might be able to assume that's the press not knowing anything about the the they're not being Austrians that I allow, for example. They're talking about ah the the cannonballs are hitting the ice in the frozen lakes and the Austrians are drowning and falling to I'm like what? Are you saying jo Joachim Phoenix is going to be Napoleon? Yeah, fantastic. Oh, he's a great actor. I fantastic. <laughs> I'm provisionally fine with that. Um, I mean, did you I, see I him in the Joker? I did not get through the Joker. What? Yeah, I, I did not sit through the whole movie. Pourquoi? He's he's really good. He's a, it's a brilliant performance. There's no doubt about that. I just found him totally repulsive and didn't want to watch any more about him. Um, yes, I mean, which is the, I mean, the point is that yes, he's repulsive. <laughs> That's but, right. I mean, the movie's doing what it's set out to do. I just I just wasn't there for it at that at that particular time. Clearly, you're talking about a different fortress than I'm talking about. Um, uh, yeah, Sledge wrote, and Lecky became a pr professional writer, as far as I recall. Uh, the science fiction writer Anne Lecky, spelled the same way, appears to not be a relation, by the way. Um, <laughs> here's St Stigler hates Batman, too. What a surprise. <laughs> I am shocked that Stigler <laughs> hates Batman. Oh, you gotta love the guy. Shocked. Shocked. Batman does not show up in this movie, so it's it's kind of irrelevant. Um, but I'm I'm real interested in seeing what they do with Napoleon. Now, now like I said, the apparently they showed some footage at some film festival of the, the Ridley Scott Napoleon thing. And I, I believe that the that the the press just doesn't know that Russians and Austrians and Prussians are different people. In fact, I venture to say that none of them have heard of Prussia. And the only time they have heard of Austria is when they go skiing there. So, and they only know Russia because, because Putin. So um, I don't trust the press on this. So we'll see when the movie comes out. I'll totally subscribe to Apple TV plus for that. Um <laughs> And then, oh then the, the, the long awaited, I guess long awaited, long abandoned Stanley Kubrick Napoleon project is supposed to get turned into a Steven Spielberg led movies, a mini series on HBO, but we'll see if that actually happens. I don't even uh, know what you're talking uh, about. Uh, I'm obviously on board. So Stanley Kubrick was tr with, tried to make a Napoleon movie. Oh my and he actually God. had an agreement with the, I think, Romanian army to serve as the extras in the film. But then, uh, Warren Bondarchuk's War and Peace and Waterloo showed up, and neither of them were commercially successful in the West. So whoever the whoever the studio was got cold feet and pulled the money. A lot ah, of like the God a lot sake. of like the camera technique techniques and 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 cinematography techniques and stuff like that ended up getting used in Barry Lyndon, which is an amazing movie, by the way. I haven't um, watched that yet. Anybody that has not seen it is an amazing, absolutely spellbinding movie. It's the it's the second best thing that uh, Ryan O'Neill was ever in, and it's second best because Sean Connery's in the other one. So, um, Decision Comics. That's right, Frank Fuley. Excellent. Um, I will. Uh, agree that uh, many people's interpret this is the same thing about 40k actually and fight club um many people have a moronic and naive understanding of this of of this material but it, it's not just that right wait wait, wait, wait. Uh, <clears throat> jeff what's going on talk to me jeff i don't know what's going on this is it this weekend because I'm I'm like an hour and a half away from you're there. not going to the tank show oh my god jesus christ how come these people know this and I don't know it? The Batman Solitaire War Game by Stigler. Is it at the Ottawa Museum? I, oh, Jeff, Ottawa Museum. I didn't Museum get through what? this either, to be honest about it. Um, wasn't Sean Pertwee in, in, in that as Alfred? I think that was the case. And as I, if, if I'm remembering that correctly, he's absolutely the best thing about that. Because uh, I thought the rest of it was was 
was garbage. I know people liked it. Maybe it got better, but I watched like two episodes of it and said, this is trash. I'm not investing another 30 hours into this. So damn. I, I got farther along into Arrow and that eventually lost my attention as well. I watched like two seasons of Arrow. You know, I don't, I, you know, I, 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 I'm a Batman guy. I'm an Iron Man guy, but I can watch one movie, maybe two movies. I can't get into this Marvel DC world civil war. Ah, God help us. Well, Civil War especially was really refer- was was probably the most referential movie that they've done other than Endgame, I suppose. Uh, I've seen, I haven't seen the new Black Panther. I probably should watch it. Um, the old Black I mean, Panther paying, was fantastic. For the first one was really, really, really fantastic. Good. Uh, p- possibly the best thing they had done up to that fantastic. point. I, I think I could make that case. Um. I mean, people liked, uh, as Shigler can attest, uh, everybody liked uh, Desert Fox Deluxe, so we know that's good, right? So, Bebop Deluxe. Desert Fox Deluxe. From Decision that's another Games. band? Desert Fox Deluxe, the war game. Oh, I thought you were talking about the band. No, clearly not. That's a terrible band name. So... Uh, I really rather liked Man of Steel. I think it had problems. But I think that Man of Steel is basically a good movie with problems, whereas Batman v Superman is a shitty movie that had a couple cool things in it. Um, And then Justice League uh, was just a shitty movie with, again, a couple of cool things in it, I suppose. I do think that the the Snyder cut of Justice League is a far better piece of work. Uh, Although I'm really fucking tired of hearing it but it, it, Jeff, it are you talking better. about the animated spider-man series the original ones the 67 ones oh those are terrible i love them those are terrible the music the jazz <laughs> yeah i can't i i mean i'm not that old i remember those i'm like man this is garbage um, I do remember very clearly like spider-man and his amazing friends with firestar and iceman um, and uh, for like a season of that, I think they did three seasons of that. And for one of those seasons, they'd have like a guest star on each show. And like one week they'd have Doctor Strange and one week ah, they'd have the X-Men. And, sakes, I mean, that yeah. was, I thought that was awesome at the time. And for some reason, uh, Wolverine was Australian in that. I'm not sure what was going on there, but. 67 um, Spider-Man. I got the whole box set. It's wicked. I In the box set, there's some I've never seen, man. Never seen. It was pretty psychedelic. I, 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 I can't argue it. with that. The uh, first I really were black and white. I really liked at the time. I, I've tried to because you could find them online. I, I've tried to watch them in the meantime, and I don't think they thought they were when I was nine. But uh, the 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 challenge of the Super Friends. That's one of several uh, Super Friends series that they did, which are pretty variable in quality. But that was like by far the best of the the run. Uh, those were really good. At, again, oh, when I was are nine. You, are you watching the Spider Man straight? The the what? Are you watching the sixty seven Spider Man straight? Well, I haven't seen it since I was probably eleven. I'm talking so. about that. Are you having a few drinks or maybe a few uh, talks? I, I don't. We don't. That's illegal. You go to you go to big boy jail for that here in Ohio, Dan. I well, would never engage in that activity. Yes, no, but at least. You got to watch it a little bit inebriated. Oh, I completely sympathize with this perspective. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I just, I'm not doing yeah. that. That's all. I didn't know Ralph Bakshi did that. Really? I didn't know that. Nah, Ralph Jeff, Bakshi's still Jeff. around. I don't know if he's done anything in a long Jeff, time. Jeff, it's a different type of art. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, have you seen the Bakshi Lord of the Rings? Yes. It's interesting. I, like, I enjoyed it. You could totally tell when here this is the place at which they ran out of money because there are places where the animation is absolutely amazing, and then there's the, the other places where you're like, what the fuck are they even thinking to put this <laughs> in there? Uh, and I'm not even talking about the thing ends in the middle. I, that's that's yeah. just the reality of the how long they had runtime. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's there's good stuff in there. Uh the the casting is generally quite good. Uh, Michael Hordern, uh is that right? Or was that he on the BBC? I forget who was Gandalf uh, in that. But uh, Anthony Daniels was Legolas, which is great. Didn't uh, John Hurt Hardy? was Aragorn. John Hurt, eh? John Hurt was Aragorn, yeah. And didn't Bakshi do The Hobbit too? No, that was Rankin Bass. 
which is okay. marvelous, by the way. Uh, I I have that on DVD. I I watch it every couple of years. the The Rankin Bass mm -hmm. Hobbit is marvelous. I love it. It is way better than that Peter Jackson garbage. And whether you blame Peter Jackson or blame New Line or whoever, you someone is to blame for the terrible Hobbit live action trilogy. Uh, what what scene are you talking about? Now, Rankin Bass, th these were like made for TV specials that came along. I forget whether they were before or after the uh, Bakshi Lord of the Rings, but they were roughly the same era. Okay, so they did the, they did the Hobbit, which is terrific, um, and then they did something called the Return of the King, which is what it sounds like. It's the last book of the Lord of the Rings. They like skipped the rest. And went directly. I just spit all over the TV, uh, all over the monitor. Um, they uh, they like skipped the rest and cut right to the right before the Battle of Pelennor Fields, and Frodo and Sam are going into into Mordor. Um, it's a like a really bizarre choice, but I'll tell you what: every key scene in the book is in there, and they nail it. Now, there's goofy songs too, like "When There's a Whip, There's a Way," <laughs> which is hilarious. Uh, in a sort of charming way, and Frodo <laughs> of the Nine Fingers <laughs> and the Ring of oh, Doom. Jesus Christ, that's incredible! So, oh, it's a it, the uh, the music's very catchy, actually, but it's it's very cheesy. But they but they nail every important scene to to better than than except Frodo and Sam in the cracks of Doom. They do better at every one of those scenes than Peter Jackson. Really, the, the scenes I'm thinking of, right? Uh. Peter Jackson spends more time with the charge of the Rohirrim than the than the, the rank and bass one does. So that has a lot more impact. But I I think Eowyn and the Witch King was in the movie in the Peter Jackson movies was absolutely leaden. I didn't like that treatment of that scene at all. So which um, what are we talking about? The, the Return of the King animated? Yeah. Can I get this on YouTube? Probably. Well, I don't okay. know about YouTube, but you can find it online somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, all of these cut out Tom Bombadil. It's, it's funny, eh? Because Tom Bombadil... Uh, yes, I agree with this, actually. This is this is handled better in... There are, there are stylistic choices in the Peter Jackson movies that I don't object to from a movie standpoint that don't ring quite right with me from a Tolkien standpoint. Um, and Galadriel turning into scary black light lady is is uh, it's just a little too much. That scene is better in the Bakshi version. I will agree with that. Uh, generally speaking, I did I thought the Bakshi version you was know, not great, but you know, already cutting Tom Bombadil. It, as a matter of fact, didn't he save one of the hobbits from the trees? He saves all the hobbits from the trees. all the hobbits. Okay, so all the geez. hobbits a couple of times. He saves them from. <clears throat> saves them from Old Man Willow. There you and go. He later saves them from the Barrow Whites. The and Barrow gives them Whites. The okay. He gives them the daggers, the, the daggers of Numenor, wrought to the bane of Mordor by the men of Western. He gives them that the daggers. Mary later stabs the Witch King with. So, who in the movie, who gives them the daggers? They just, uh, Aragorn. He's just okay, carrying so around a big, a big bag of that. daggers. So Bombadil gives him the daggers. Yeah, yep. In in the book, yeah. They they come out of the barrows, right? The, the barrows are these ancient tombs yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. fallen, you know, princes or lords or whatever. Uh, and they've got tomb loot in them, right? So everybody yeah. agrees that there was no room for Bombadil. That said, it, the, the perfect actor for Bombadil is still around, but he was probably too old even at the time. That man is Brian Blessed. Would have been the perfect Tom Bombadil. Now, if there there had been like a like they did with Watchmen, where they like made the animated thing of the pirate ship stuff and like put it in on the DVD as a special, if they'd done that with Tom Bombadil with Brian Blessed, I'd have been fuck friggin' delighted. But and uh, and what about what about Bjorn? Bjorn is it the Hobbit or is it in, in uh, Bjorn does Rings? not show up in the Lord of the Rings. I think there's a uh, mention the of the, the Bjornings, Rings store, huh? his people. But uh, but Bjorn only shows up, and I like I like the treatment of Bjorn in The Hobbit. That there's there's good stuff in the first movie. Uh, there's a lot of filler too, and as you keep going, there's more and more filler and less and less good stuff until the filler outweighs the good stuff. By I didn't like The Hobbit, the, uh, the the movie. The first 
like 45 minutes of it are fantastic. They are fantastic. Before it, prior to the point where they leave Hobbiton, it's amazing. And I loved it. And then it, it begins slowly inching over the crest of the hill. Oh, my Slowly God. and descending tedious. down. It was tedious. Descending. Oh, it, well, I mean, if you, have you watched Peter Jackson's King Kong? Yes. I, I could not remain awake through that movie. I know. It is tedious as hell. But you know what? Jack Black uh, helped in that tediousness. I'm not the world's biggest Jack Black yeah. fan. He's certainly been amusing in places. Yes, I, I, yes. He, I, not there. I think he, for me, wears out his welcome fairly Yes. Quickly. So there you go. There you go. He's too old now, unfortunately. Uh, I want to see this, too. Isn't this on Netflix? I thought this was I on saw Netflix. it. I saw it. Yeah, the problem is there's like two and a half hours of movie there, okay? But the problem is that you've got like eight or nine hours of movie and like 75, by the time you got to the end, like 75% of it was trash. So I don't even mind them taking appendix stuff and like sticking that in. I, I'm basically okay with that as an idea. The problem is it sucked. What? So the, uh, the whole, uh, the whole white council against the necromancer plot line and oh my god i thought we were talking about all quiet on the western front for god's sake no we're i you get me talking about tolkien or tolkien movies and i can go for two hours on that no shit uh we have occasionally mentioned war games this evening that's pretty much it so i you know i don't know this this could have been new line interference that's possible uh jack black is great in high fidelity high fidelity is a very good movie um the problem is that he then becomes the main character in a bunch of other movies in which he uh, uh, wears out his welcome fairly quickly. Yes, anyway, I agree. Folks. I agree, uh, Stigler. <clears throat> you do not need to reimagine Tolkien. Not every, you know, it's it it's a really dense book. It's actually really hard to adapt structurally. There's a lot of challenges with it. Uh, it it's not necessarily readily rememberable that a lot of the stories told in flashback. Gandalf getting captured by Saruman and stuff, that's all told in flashback. Yes. The, 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 the Dwimmerberg, where uh, uh, Aragorn enlists the, the oath breakers of the army of the dead, that's all told in flashback. And it's really hard to do that. So there's a lot uh, of the, structural adjustments that had to be made the Balrog, in the Lord of the Rings. The Balrog but, fighting with uh, Gandalf, that's flashback. Well, that's as a flashback in the movie. In the in the that's it, it's a flashback in the book too. Let me put it that way. It's, yeah, it's kind of positioned as a dream sequence in the in the movie, which I thought was actually really really clever, actually, because uh, that way there was like a way to fit it in, and it's awesome, by the way. I think it's awesome. Um, and without like having Gandalf fucking explain this when he shows up again. <laughs> so, like, oh well, do you see? Which is exactly how it works in the book. Um, and I can get through that, but that's that's the reason why a lot of people consider it a fairly challenging book to read. And the Balrog was wicked. Uh, the Balrog is terrific. The Cave Troll was wicked. terrific too. But if you go back to the book and read about the Cave Troll, that's like half a page. Okay, the, the Cave Troll gets like six <laughs> minutes in the movie. Uh, the Cave Troll gets like three paragraphs in the book. So, anyway. Folks, we are out of time. I would like to remind you that this is our very last, very last, everything you always wanted to know about Wargaming. We will be back next Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday with a new, new title at the same time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, so I would like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. The numbers looked great. Um, wishing us farewell until Dan gets his back dandruff under control. Um, and we will see you all next week.